Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of the Grigos of Injado. My name is Tam, uh, I'm back again behind the camera after a few recipe videos and today this video is going to be a reaction video to one of uh, my favorite uh, YouTube channels out there. Uh, in case that you don't know uh, the channel I'm talking about uh, or the YouTuber, it's Mark Wins. Um, now, Mark uh, is a person that I'm very jealous of because he is doing the two things that he loves most in life, and that is traveling around the world and sampling the local cuisine of every place that he visits. Uh, I have been watching his uh, YouTube videos for quite some time now. Uh, I constantly become hungry by watching them. Uh, and I found out very recently that he's uh, been to Greece and uh, there are a few videos from Greece that he's done. So I have decided to have a look at them uh, and starting with uh, one video that he filmed in Crete. I grew up in Crete, so I am looking forward to watch this video. Uh, and uh, throughout it, I'm going to be stopping it and adding my own comments as well. Uh, but one thing that I love about Mark, uh, first of all, that he's always happy, always smiley, <laughs> very positive person. Uh, another thing is that he never, he, he's very, very respectful of every culture that he travels. You would never see him uh, actually saying a bad thing about any of the dishes that he's trying, okay? He always likes them. Um, and uh, he has a very distinctive uh, uh way when he likes something he sort of leans his head and closes his eyes and etc so after watching him for a lot uh, i have think i think that i've managed to to suss out when he loves a particular dish and when he's not that keen not that he says that he doesn't like it but i think i've managed it at least i think but i'm not gonna give up uh, his, his his secret uh, and uh, another thing is which i have as well is that he is never scared of trying a dish, no matter how it looks or how it tastes or how what is made of. He will try it, uh, and I'm, I'm the same. Uh, uh, you know, I'm brave enough, no matter what it is, to try it and see whether I like it or not. But without further ado, uh, today's video it's called Cretan Food, 100% pure love, farm to table Mediterranean cuisine in Crete. So I'm very much looking forward to watching this video. I am going to put my headphones on uh, as I will be uh, watching it on my computer. And as I said, I will be frequently stopping, pausing and telling you uh, a few more things uh, as to what I think. Uh, so let's begin. We're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Hanya on the island of Crete in Greece. And I think one of the best reasons that you can come to Crete is to experience the authentic Mediterranean food culture. Okay, uh, a very quick pause there. I don't know if you're able to hear it. Uh, the sound of cicadas. I think it's called cicadas. Uh, we call them dzidzika in Greece. Uh, and this is, especially if you go in the summer or in the spring, a very characteristic sound throughout the day, uh, especially if you're out in the open or in the islands. Uh, that constant zzz, 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 uh, I don't know, I mean, it makes me homesick uh, and it's more profound, I guess, during the hours of two to five in the afternoon when people uh, sort of fall asleep uh, and have their siesta uh, and therefore it's uh, very quiet and all you can hear is that sound. Uh, but I just love it, I just love it. And so I'm on my way this morning to go eat at a restaurant uh, which is known for preserving authentic Cretan food. We're going to jump in a taxi. It's a little ways outside of town within the mountains and I'm looking forward to eating and to sharing with you some authentic Cretan food. I have to say that I am already looking forward to that. I, uh, you know, looking at the food there uh, a lot of memories when I was a kid in Crete uh, and I'm looking forward to, to, to see that. Okay, thank you. I think it's about 20 kilometers uh, just straight up and towards the mountain. Yes, uh, 
as and as you can see, um, the taxi is taking him uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and this is another thing that I've said in other videos as well. Um, most of the time, the most amazing and traditional Greek food, you're going to find it outside of the cities, uh, in places up in the mountains or in the middle of nowhere, uh, where only the Greeks know where it is, only the locals, and they would take their cars and go there. Uh, and I know that a lot of uh, people in the UK, for example, might think, you know, a restaurant that is not open in the city center is not going to be good for business. But these are the types of restaurants that are actually making a very, very uh, good uh, turnover because the food is great. So the food is basically their uh, selling point uh, and the customers come from the word of mouth. So f families will go there, they will have a great time, they will tell their friends and they will go over there and it builds up a custom uh, this way. Uh, so if you ever visit Greece for the first time, um, make sure that you speak to the locals uh, and find out where the best place for locals is to go and have something to eat. Uh, and you will find out that quite frequently that place is nowhere near uh, the city or the city center um, or the beach, uh, but it's somewhere out of the way. We're driving further and further into the mountain range, the rugged mountain range. We've passed by just an endless sea of olive trees. You can see vineyards, you can see all of just the lush Mediterranean herbs. We've passed by sheep, flocks of sheep and goats. And you can just sense how, how rich the land is here and, and how fertile it is. When I um, I'm pausing it because he's absolutely right here. Um, Greece is mainly a, a, a country full of mountains um, and a lot of people might, uh, especially when if they come from the UK, which is very green, uh, they might travel around Greece and think that, oh my God, it's rocky. Uh, but the sun and the climate make up for it because no matter how rocky the <laughs> terrain is, uh, it grows wild herbs, it grows a lot of greens that you can eat, olive trees, obviously, and amazing olive oil, um, a lot of trees, a lot of greens. Uh, it, it, it is just, you know, it is very fertile ground, very fertile ground. And, you know, you don't get very heavy winters, uh, so pretty much everything can grow there. And as you saw uh, on the video there, uh, it's mountains, but it's full of greens, a lot of fields, uh, a lot of olive groves uh, and other uh, fruits um, and, and vegetables uh, and a lot of vineyards as well. Uh, but let's get to the point. I thought of coming to Crete. This is the dreamy landscape and, and environment that I had literally dreamt about and what I wanted to experience when I came to Crete. It was really quite a quite a journey to get here. We wound around the mountain roads and oh, I'm standing kind of in the middle of the road right now but the owner was here to greet us at the restaurant. You can smell he still cooks over fire. The restaurant is over here. We're gonna definitely get a look at all the food he's preparing but the, the dining room is up here. Wow this is a this is an absolutely beautiful place. Oh. I am already thrilled that we made the journey here. Oh, amazing. Where are you from? Is it okay? USA? Uh, from USA, and my wife is from Thailand. Thailand? Thailand, yes. You, you? Thailand also. America. America. Arizona. Arizona. Mountain gold. Why is here? Because I love to eat. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Oh, okay. Now. <sighs> A lot of people might look at that and think, Ugh, that, doesn't, that, that doesn't look very nice. Um, and unfortunately, uh, they will be missing a, a great deal of tasty food if they think only with their eyes. Uh, food, essentially, even though you have, you, you know, when it comes to food, you, all, all your senses are there. You know, you see the food, you can smell the food, you can touch the food. You can taste the food and you can hear the food, you know, crackling, etc. Uh, but the two main senses is essentially smell 
and above all taste you know i don't care what people think you know uh, maybe a food you know i've i've been to restaurants where the food is presented so good that it's like a work of art but when you taste it it's completely blunt uh, and i don't care how the food um, looks uh, it's the taste that matters to me uh, and here you are you know you can see he's cooking using wood ovens uh, clay pots and this is wild mountain goat now goat meat um, is is less fatty than a lamb because the goats are out in the open and they climb up the mountains they exercise all day and in Crete they eat a lot of goat and it is so delicious here he's just I guess from what I see here you know, there's not much going on he has put the goat meat in the pot maybe with uh, olive oil and some salt and pepper maybe some other herbs uh, and a bit of water and it let it cook you know on its own juices and in the steam uh, but this will be so tender because most probably he's cooking it for a couple of hours at least uh, but let's see what other things he has Amazing. Really amazing. Wow. Creta food. No 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 what he's trying to say in his uh, very few English that he knows is that, you know, this is uh, traditional Cretan food made. You're not going to find any souvlakis, which is like uh, the traditional street food in Greece, or moussaka or pasticcio or, or anything of the, you know, traditional Greek food that every other restaurant sells. You know, here you're going to find what, you know, Crete eats. And uh, this particular dish here, you can see, is green beans. Green beans with potatoes, a very traditional casserole dish with tomatoes, uh, very simple to make and very delicious. Sometimes we put meat in it, but I can see that it's just the beans and the potatoes. So I guess this will either be like as a side, there's a meze, or as an accompaniment to the other meat dishes. I'm getting hungry already. Wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Laura, Dolma? Dolma, where is it? Okay. Melizzano. Oh, I, I, I have to stop here again. Sorry, guys. Um, as you can see, everything in there, forget like a state-of-the-art uh, kitchen, you know, uh, with stainless steel, etc. All he has there is, you know, the old style ovens, wooden ovens, uh, and they make delicious food as well. Uh, this particular dish you see there, very traditional and in Crete as well. Uh, it's basically the uh, flour of the zucchinis, of the courgettes, and you stuff it with rice and herbs uh, and you cook it. Oh, and it's delicious. And as you can see from the steam there, that is almost ready to eat. Uh, this is amazing. Okay. Okay. Uh, he said uh, this is uh, aubergines uh, or eggplant, you say in the US. Um, now, from what I can see here, it's like a Yemistai uh, casserole aubergines. Uh, again, uh, chunks of aubergine, uh, you put it in a casserole with tomatoes. Uh, sometimes you use other vegetables as well. Um, I can see some, uh, those little like spores that you see there. I have a feeling that he might be using, um, it's like, we call it xenochondro in, in Crete, um, which is, um, uh, how can I describe it? It's, it's some sort of, um, uh, of uh, like a pasta, but, you know, tiny, tiny bits uh, and quite um, sour. Uh, but they go very well with meat uh, and they absorb the, the juices and it has a very, very nice taste. 
an acquired taste, but very nice taste. So maybe that dish has a little bit of that as well. But let's see what else they have. All, all wood, all traditional oh, yeah. stuff. Everything is cooked in traditional Cretan ceramic pots. This is an amazing, an amazing place. Oh, ho, 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 ho. And outside is where he's doing most of the cooking over fire, the traditional way. You can smell the aromas of the meat, the lamb, and the goat. Ho, ho, ho. Maybe you like to look garden? Sure. Every yes, um, you saw the bread there that he was making in the, the, the old oven. Um, when you go to Greece, uh, it's worth uh, visiting. There are bakeries all over the place because uh, Greeks <laughs> eat bread. Uh, if there's that one thing that you always find in a table, it's bread. Uh, but it's not like toasted bread or sliced bread or anything like that. It's proper, proper bread of the sourdough type. Uh, so when you go to Greece, do go to a, a Greek bakery and get some Greek bread because you are going to be eating it every single day, trust me, with the uh, ripe tomatoes and feta cheese and olive oil and everything. Bread is the way to go in Greece. Everything is from your garden. And, and bio. And from your, and the meat also? It's here, it's not a restaurant. Yes. It's here, it's farm. Okay. It's different. Okay. Restaurant, telephone, supermarket. Yes. Farm, you want people, garden and animals. Oh, I love this guy. Um, yes, as you can see, that place, um, he, he says that it's not a restaurant. In the restaurant, you buy everything from the supermarkets, from your suppliers. This is a farm. So they grow their own vegetables, they grow their own herbs, and I guess they have their own animals. So what you see there, that goat meat, uh, it's from their own goats. Uh, you cannot get more fresh, more great food more healthy food than that um you know you know that the animals are out on the wild and they're eating herbs and they're eating greens uh, and what the land produces rather than getting injected with uh, medicine and stuff like that um to be honest i've i've never heard this place uh in crete but i'm just gonna um do a little bit of uh digging after this video and uh, i'm gonna definitely find out where it is in crete because i would love to visit it and uh, i would put it in my description in the description of this video below uh, together with the link of this particular video you we're watching now uh, so you can also know where that place is uh, but so far i am already getting very hungry Now, you may be thinking by looking at this that, uh, you know, oh my God, um, you know, this is too simple. You know, there's a lot of bone, a lot of fat, but trust me, it's been cooking for so long that the meat will fall off the bone. Uh, and together with all the other dishes in the accompaniments, it will be a great meal. I'm telling you that it will be a great meal. He's such a nice, friendly, passionate guy. You can tell how he has, he, he pours his love into his cooking. And he cooks over fire. He has all these stews going over the coals and he has everything cooking in traditional Cretan clay ceramic pots. And he made sure to tell me that this is, this is not a restaurant, this is a farm. So all of the ingredients are from right here on their farm. The vegetables, they have animals, they have the livestock. They have all the herbs and all the ingredients. I, I, I know for sure they get their own olive oil, be this being in the mountains of Crete. This is a spectacular food place. Uh, exactly. Um, this is uh, a farm. Um, and something about the clay cooking. Uh, it's one of the great ways to cook, especially in the oven or oven uh, or, or, over a naked fire. Because clay is very porous, so you know, the, the meat 
uh, breathes uh, in, inside. You know, some of the steam will, you know, leave there, and it, it, it I don't know. Um, whenever I've cooked in clay, uh, it is just give a, a completely different dimension to the taste uh, of the of the meal. Um, but as you saw there, it is a farm, and most probably they're producing their own olive oil. Um, to be honest, especially in Crete and other areas uh, in Greece, in the islands or in the Peloponnese, um, I would say that most families have at least a few olive trees uh, left from their grandfathers. Um, and every year they go and collect the olives and take them and uh, press them. And uh, they, you know, they get maybe one or two or three barrels of olive oil, extra, extra virgin olive oil, and they, you know, keep it at home and they use it throughout the the year and by the way um, Greece has the highest consumption of extra virgin olive oil per person in the world so we do we do cook with olive oil we do use a lot of olive oil uh, so it makes sense because it's very expensive good olive oil is very expensive it makes sense to produce your own um, olive oil okay let's go Oh, what is... Wow, Great. thank you. You're welcome. This is peaches? Peaches or...? Peaches, uh, 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 small one, a bigger one. Okay, before we get started eating some, some of those meaty stews, um, I'm gonna walk around with Adam around the, the garden, but first he just picked some... I think these are either peaches or nectarines. No, they're fuzzy. I think they're peaches. He picked them right off the tree there. Oh, it's like crisp like an apple but then it has the flavor of a peach. Oh, it's really good. Oh, cows, okay. Yes. Um, Greece uh, is, I think, the third or the fourth highest producer of peaches in the world. Um, and there are three different types. You know, you have the peaches, the nectarines, and something we call yermas. My personal favorite is yermas because it is as, it's looking as good as that, but it's very, very juicy, very softer. Uh, this is a peach and it's it, it's a lot crispier uh, but if you haven't tried fruit in Greece you really have to try it because you will fall in love this is how fruit really tastes uh, it is just you know and especially there in the farm the fruit you pick it up when it's ripe you know you don't pick it up when it's still green and is stored in freezers and travels thousands of miles around the world uh, and by the time it enters your plate you know it's not ripe at all it hasn't properly uh, uh, um, it hasn't properly gathered the taste that a ripe fruit has uh, so I'm very jealous of Mark there because he is enjoying a fruit like it's supposed to be enjoyed right from the tree <laughs> Right, a bit of an embarrassing situation here. Uh, in case you're wondering why my stubble has slightly grown suddenly, uh, that's because as I was recording the video, uh, my camera for some reason stopped, stopped recording. Uh, and I've realized once the whole video has been recorded. So, uh, unfortunately, from this point onwards, uh, I will have to start the video from where I had stopped it and basically start recording again. So essentially I am recording the remainder of the video at a different date uh, once I realize that not all of my recording has been recorded. Hope it makes sense. So let's continue with the video. We have a family of cows. And okay. ooh, 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 ooh. 
we have family on the mountain. Okay. Uh, because we have uh, that animal here because they have acid at the eye. Ah. Oh. And they take their poison every day. Oh. Okay. That's here. Wow. We're taking a walk down to the farm to see some of the produce and some of the... Are there more animals also? Yes, of course. Okay. And these are all olives. Oh, lots and lots of olives. You can see uh, all the olive trees and this is pretty much what you find um, all around Crete uh, if you travel in uh, inland. Uh, basically, um, all these uh, olive trees that uh, around November time they will be full of olives that you can pick, take, press and make lovely olive oil with it. But you can see now they're going to the farm, most probably they're gonna uh, go into the gardens to see the herbs and the vegetables and most probably the other animals there. The vegetables who can eat at the restaurant from here. Everything that's cooked is all from within the garden yes. and from within the farm, it's a farm. Wow, oh, this is... This is straight farm to table. And, and when I talk about straight farm to table, this is like straight from their backyard to the table that we're gonna eat. Look at this land. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, mama and the big father. Okay. They, they, that's pretty much remind me of my childhood here because you would go to visit your grandparents uh, and you go to the village and they will have a little garden like you saw before. Uh, that it looks like it's all full of wild vegetation, but actually it's full of lovely vegetables and herbs to eat. Uh, this is absolutely a Mediterranean oasis, a Mediterranean paradise. Nah! Sure. Uh, you want to try? Okay. <laughs> This is amazing. Obviously these are sheep there and I'm most probably they will have uh, goats uh, since they're cooking goat meat. Uh, but you know in Crete and in other parts of, of, uh, of Greece but you know in, in Crete you will find wild goats roaming around the, the mountains and the, and the hills and most of the time they are not secluded like you see the sheep here they just roam around doing their own thing and the only occasion you run uh, into the uh, shepherds which nowadays they <laughs> they don't go on foot they have probably their own cars or jeeps uh, or even a, a bike um, and they will have their um, the, uh, the shepherd dogs uh, you know sort of chasing after the the goats but the goats normally roam wildly into the uh, into the valleys and the hills wow amazing amazing soft, eh? yeah <laughs> really really soft mm. you can see a goat uh, in the background over there that uh, dark brown one <laughs> looking at the camera suspiciously uh yeah so that's definitely a goat over there uh but now they've you know, taken the ship hey guy yeah and those are the chickens and the hens um this is so much how i grew up uh basically in in our um country home we had uh, a big uh, area outside a big space so my dad had had done a little area to have chickens um, and you know you would go early in the evening and look around and pick the eggs that they've made fresh eggs uh, you know so you had chickens fresh eggs you have the cows and the uh, sorry the goats and the sheep so you have fresh milk you make cheese out of it and uh, you know at some point that you will use the meat uh, from them as well uh, and I know a lot of you that uh, might disapprove of that but in a sense, this is the normal, in a sense, life that used to be. You know, people will have their own farms and 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 need from those animals that they raised. There were no massively produced uh, factory 
fed animals at those times. One of the things that fascinates me about Cretan culture is that traditionally people are known for living very, very long lives uh, because of their because of the, the way they eat and they always eat off the land. Uh, they eat seasonal, uh, the traditional Cretan diet. And this is a throwback to the past. This is, this is the way people ate in the past. This is the way they would raise their animals, eat from the land and eat seasonally. And this is the best way to eat. Exactly, best way to eat uh, seasonal. Um, and as Mark said there, uh, people from Crete and generally from Greece uh, they have, uh, I don't know if they still do, uh, but until very recently they had some of the highest uh, life expectancy uh, rates. Uh, and that was mainly because in the old days, uh, you know, the, the Greek diet did not consist of a lot of meat. They, they would eat a lot of vegetables, they would eat a lot of fruit, um, they would eat a lot of um, things like beans and lentils and stuff like that. And meat, they would only use meat maybe once a week, if that. But, you know, nowadays, unfortunately, Greeks do eat a lot of junk food and they do eat a lot of meat. Um, <laughs> I would say that they eat meat almost every day. Uh, so that has affected the uh, life expectancy, uh, but it's still one of the highest in the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> You can taste. Okay. It's very sweet. And it's super food. Oh yeah. Mm. It's good, huh? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Take it out. If you want, you can. Those are really, really good. <laughs> are they blackberry? Maybe blackberries or mmm. Really sweet and juicy. That was actually a completely unplanned trip to the farm. We I just started talking with the uh, Adam who, who runs the farm and runs the livestock and we just ended up walking further and seeing all the livestock uh, but now we're we're sitting down to eat that just just increases my hunger and my excitement okay I have to stop here because this is something that you really have to order when you go to a traditional Greek restaurant in Greece that is simply a homemade bread nice crusty bread grilled on, on fire uh, drizzled with extra virgin olive oil and sprinkled with fresh herbs. Uh, I can see here it's fresh thyme uh, or oregano. Normally it's oregano. Uh, it could be oregano to be honest, uh, but it is, oh, it is so good. And if you have a Greek salad in front of you with all the juices at the bottom, you just dip it in there and it's heaven, heaven. And this is some of the, the house wine. Okay, gotta try some of that. Oh wow, that is spectacular. Oh, and I'm sure, well actually we're sitting right under some, some grapevines. I know the wine is made right here as well. I gotta try some of this bread. Oh, and it's very, very crispy. Okay, a word of warning about wine in Greece. Now, in the last 10, 20 years, the Greek wines have uh, become very popular around the world. They have won numerous uh, awards around the world and that's because nowadays a lot of the Greek wine producers have you know joined the professional way of making good quality wine. Um, but um, you know the wine that you get in a lot of Greek restaurants especially the homemade wine which comes like this in a carafe um, it's a bit of a hit and miss, purely because most of the homemade wine would be from their own uh, grape uh, vineyards. Uh, vineyards. Um, they would not have followed, you know, really the the way to produce high quality wine. They would just, you know, you make wine out of those grapes. So it's a bit of a hit and miss. Normally, it obviously would be a lot cheaper, but don't think that uh, if you have a house wine uh, that you don't like that uh, reflects the quality of Greek wine in general. Uh, it's nothing like that. Uh, there are a lot of uh, amazing Greek wines. Uh, I have made a couple of videos on the Greekosophy channel about some of the ones that you should try. So check uh, those two videos again. Uh, but at least Mark has been really lucky there and uh, this particular homemade wine is delicious. Uh, you can feel it's crunchy in your fingers and then it looks like there is definitely some oregano on it. Okay. 
It's really crispy. It's really dense. It tastes like Crete. And also, as we're sitting down to eat, they're about to play some live Cretan music right in front of us, too. The view is spectacular. The locality of the food can't get better either. And with live music, as we're, we're hanging out here, this is relaxing Mediterranean Crete paradise. Um, yes, um, you saw the um, cars there. Uh, imagine, you know, if you were in Greece, you know, uh, especially lunchtime as it is there. Uh, you leave work or you have your lunch break, you take your car and you go to a place like that. You are out in the open, lovely fresh air, sunny, excellent food, live music, a bit of wine as well. You know, that's a great lunch break to have, isn't it? Um, but it, it is like, like I said to you, the word of mouth. You saw there, this place is out in the middle of nowhere, but people do know it and they don't um, mind taking their cars and driving a little bit out of their way uh, in order to go and have a nice meal. Mountain goat. Oh, mountain goat. Yes. The chef, he is just going to bring us five different dishes. I'm not, I'm not sure all the dishes, but he's just going to bring his personal favorites. And the first dish that he brought out, I was going to wait for all the dishes to come out, but I absolutely cannot. The first is stewed Cretan mountain goat. Look at those chunks of all natural meat. Oh, look at, okay, I'm just going to pick up one of these guys right here. Okay, sorry, Mark, I'm going to stop you there. Now, as I said before, this is as good as it can get. And it's so simple. There's no sauces in there. There's no vinaigrettes or dressings in there. Absolutely nothing. It's just the meat that has been cooked and that's about it. And this is one of the most important things about Greek cuisine, that very few ingredients and you let the taste of those ingredients, you know, uh, come out in the open and amaze you. Uh, you don't need to, you know, overpower them with anything other than what is already there. That's just the meat with the olive oil and maybe some herbs cooked in its own juices and that's it. I mean, f some people might think, oh, it's full of bone and maybe fat, but trust me, it's so tender that fat melts in your mouth, that bone will easily come off and all you're left with is some amazing meat. Look at that. It's tender, it has an amazing, like almost herb flavor to it. Wow, that's spectacular. And that's about as meaty and wonderful as you can get. Oh, that is, that is flavor meat overload right there. It's really, really good. And, and it is stewed and cooked. And while uh, Mark is enjoying his meat, uh, I've noticed he said before that the people playing live music will play traditional Cretan music. From what I could hear in the background, they're not playing Cretan music, they play another very traditional Greek uh, um, uh, type called Rebetiko. It's very popular, one of the most popular Greek styles uh, all over Greece, Rebetiko. Uh, equally good to, to, to listen to. Very, very tender, um, but you can, it, it's a natural free range grazing goat. So it has that, that natural texture to it, but it's very, very tender. Their white wine here is absolutely fantastic too. And they just brought us one more dish. I'm still blown away by that wild goat, that mountain goat. Next dish is aubergine eggplant. This is a dish that looks like it needs to be eaten with bread. I'm gonna break some of this bread, scoop on some of this. It's really nice and saucy. Oh, you can taste the fire in that eggplant. How it's been cooked over the fire in that ceramic pot. The, the eggplant is melt, melt in your mouth tender. Right, uh, yes, the bread definitely needs to be used in this dish. Um, now I can see it a look closer now and no, they don't have the xenochodrus that I told you about. It's just the, the spores from, uh, from the aubergine. Uh, it's just aubergine, olive oil, the herbs, um, and some tomato sauce, um, slowly cooked. Uh, and yes, it's taken that fiery uh, taste, uh, that uh, smoky taste to it. Uh, very nice. 
and then it's just kind of a mellow flavor but what I love about it is it just takes, tastes so natural and also just the fact that the eggplant is just melt in your mouth. Another dish has arrived and uh, the chef brought it to our table himself. This is chunks of veal and he said this is from their farm. This is Cretan veal. This is a traditional dish. It's been stewed again. You can see the chunks of meat. You can see the herbs in here. I can see some rosemary. I can see some mostly rosemary and I can smell the rosemary. Okay, this looks like I'm gonna go in with my knife here. Cut a piece of this. Just let it let it soak up some of that sauce on the bottom. Uh, yes, another dish, uh, and sometimes they do it with goat as well in Crete. They use massive pots uh, over the fire, uh, lots of chunks of uh, wild goat meat, uh, slowly, slowly cooked. It makes like a broth, uh, and in that broth they throw rice, and they use a special type of butter called stakovutiro, and um, it, the, the rice it sticks together and comes out like a like a sticky risotto sort of style uh, and it's so delicious but this one is veal uh, again nicely and slowly cooked so it's gonna be really 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 tasty and tender bottom there and get a close-up look at that that looks extremely tender and that rosemary in there oh <laughs> wow. Oh, you can taste the rosemary, and I think I can taste the white wine in there. Follow that. This is the Cretan life right here. This is, this is awesome. This is absolutely outstanding. I'm loving it. Oh, some veal juices. Little bread. Next up for and obviously after a while you have a bit more wine and somebody will maybe stand up and start dancing and the people in the other tables will start clapping and the fun begins. Some dolma and this is a plate that we got. Um, I think these are actually wrapped in I think zucchini flowers and then there's rice and the spices in here and then this is a zucchini and then with yogurt. Let's cut this open so we can see what's inside. Oh yeah you've got that rice. I think there's dill in there and maybe some other herbs and then I'm gonna dip it with the... Yes, this is a traditional version of uh, um, stuffed uh, zucchini flowers with rice and herbs. Uh, the one towards the bottom part of the plate is a zucchini, uh, again stuffed with rice, and the dip there is just plain Greek yogurt. Uh, in Greece we use it a lot, especially with rice dishes. For some reason it goes really well with rice dishes. Uh, not tzatziki, it's just plain Greek yogurt and it gives a nice addition to the dish. The side here. Oh, oh the dill comes in so nicely and then that rice is nice and gooey and gummy like a, almost like a pudding. And then, yeah, I think that is the, the zucchini flour. That's fantastic. It's really refreshing. The zucchini just melts in your mouth too. The owner just brought us a cup of tea, and I think this is some kind of Cretan mountain tea. Mmm, rosemary tea. Yeah, that's what it tastes like to me. Rosemary and probably some other Cretan herbs as well. You probably need this to wash down that mountain goat. Okay, not something that you will see very regularly in a Greek uh, table, especially if Greeks are ordering tea. We don't usually drink tea uh, with our food, definitely not. Uh, but uh, you know, you can find some really amazing uh, herbal uh, teas uh, in Greece. Uh, oregano, sage, uh, not oregano, sorry, sage, uh, chamomile, uh, Greek martin tea. Uh, and we have a video as well on the Grigosophy channel about some of them. Uh, this one, I've, I've never heard of rosemary tea, uh, so it could be, you know, dried up rosemary leaves, why not? Uh, or it could be even a, a sage or a mountain tea or another herb that has grown next to rosemary and it has, you know, taken over that smell and the taste of rosemary. Who knows? <laughs> And the final dish we got is a Cretan salad. And just like the rest of the dishes, 
They do not take the salad lightly here. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the most beautiful salads I think I've ever seen in my life. And you can be for sure certain, 100% guaranteed. Okay, that I'm gonna stop here. Um, Cretan salad. There's no such a thing as Cretan salad. What happens is um, uh, a lot of restaurants in Crete, uh, especially uh, farm ones, uh, they grow their own vegetables, so they create a salad dish using all those lovely ingredients. Uh, and they can use whatever, you know, so you go to a separate one and they have a different salad dish. Uh, so here, you know, I can, I can definitely see a little bit of lettuce, I can see potatoes, I can see cucumbers, I can see sweet corn. Uh, the cheese you see here, most probably it's um, Mizithra, it's a Cretan cheese. Uh, or it can be Anthotiro, it's two cheese that look alike. Uh, really nice uh, tomatoes, um, beetroot there, beetroot, I love beetroot. Um, what else? Uh, some peppers, I think, on the other side there. And I can see some, some raisins as well. So that is definitely a, a, a very nice salad. In the salad, all the vegetables that you see here, everything that you see here is from right here on this farm. Uh, I know the, the owner would not have it any other way. Some of the vegetables appear to be roasted. There's some eggplant and potatoes that are roasted and some peppers, but then there's also an abundance of other vegetables. There are cucumbers. There's some type of green. There, there are raisins in here and beets and tomatoes. This is insane. That's just bursting with natural flavor. Oh, that tomato is... I am seriously getting hungry right now just by watching this video. Ridiculous. It's so juicy and so refreshing. And then I got a, I got some corn in that bite. I got some raisins. This is definitely a roasted pepper here. I think it's just olive oil on top. Oh, and as you dig deeper into the salad, you can see there are chunks of the the rusk, which are the crunchy bread down here as well. Dig deeper, they're more and more fresh. Yes, rusks play a big part in Crete and in Greece in general. Uh, I, I know that the cause of a lot of confusion with, uh, I would say, with the uh, uh, non-Greek people. Uh, now, rusks are very dry, so sometimes you have to add a little bit of water or dip them in the olive oil and the salad dressing there uh, to make them softer. But they add a nice crispiness, a crunchiness uh, to your food. And, you know, if Greeks were sitting in the table there, they have put that salad in the middle and share it together with the other plates. But this, is, looks, this looks like a very, very seriously good salad. Herbs as well and, and vegetables. That just tastes like pure health and some fresh watermelon for dessert. That is just the ultimate way to end this Cretan food meal. Okay, um, as I said in other videos, in Greece you don't go to a restaurant to say to order a starter, a main, and a dessert. We put everything in the middle and we share. And it's very um, unlikely that Greeks will order a dessert after their meal. It's such a big. So normally, once you've had your meal, they will bring fruit, fresh fruit, or maybe yogurt with some uh, honey or, or nuts or ice cream, things like that. Uh, so that's why they brought some uh, watermelon and in Greece watermelon is deep red and so sweet. I can easily cut one whole watermelon in half and eat it in one go. Uh, it's so good, especially if it's nice and cold. Uh, so yes, you are lucky there, Mark. Very lucky. See you next time, four people. One, mm. two, three, and one more. <laughs> one, nothing, madam. I hope so. <laughs> it's me three. I hope so. This has... <laughs> okay, that is, that is good. That, um, I, I don't think I said it at the start of the video that Mark travels with his wife and uh, son. 
uh, very cute uh, little boy. I think it's called Micah or Micah or Mika, something like that. Uh, and obviously the guy said that, you know, next time you visit here, you're going to be four of you. Okay. One is not enough. <laughs> so Greeks love children uh, and it's, you know, a lot of uh, strong family bonds. Uh, so the owner says, I've got three. So, you know, next time, make sure you are four. <laughs> been by far the best meal that I've ever had in Crete and I think I mean I haven't eaten that that many places but I think this is a place if you love to eat this is a place you should make an effort to come to when you visit Crete no matter where you are in Crete uh, he's doing an exceptional job and again he said the owner says it's not a it's not a restaurant but it's a farm and he cooks traditional Cretan food recipes he's an amazing guy and thank you very much Thank you, thank you. You are awesome. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw what happened there. Basically, he, uh, Mark paid for the meal and the owner put the money back to his pocket or to his hand. Uh, and, you know, don't think that this is just because, you know, Mark is very popular, a uh, very popular YouTuber and, you know, uh, the guy did it, you know. Uh, I have come across quite often on occasion where, you know, the owner, uh, will not accept money for for a meal for one or another reason. Now, don't take that as an indication that you will go to a Greek restaurant and expect to have a free meal. That's uh, that is not the case. Uh, believe me, you will not have a good time. Uh, but uh, sometimes the owners genuinely, for one reason or another, maybe because you you know you enjoyed the food and they thought that you know for them a reward is that you enjoyed. The traditional food that they serve you uh, or because you know uh, you are a good customer or because you are a friend of a very good friend uh, and they treat you as somebody who's a um, who's a guest rather than a customer you know you will get uh, the money returned to you or you will not have the owner accepting any money right and he is the man right here he is the man i love this experience <laughs> Okay, so I want to say a big thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Lovely. Well, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this video. And uh, Mark, you know, you were very, very, very lucky. They had a great time. Uh, as I said, I'm going to put, uh, once I find it, the links to the place uh, in Crete uh, that Mark went. And obviously the links to Mark's uh, social media because he's a great guy. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, so you make sure that you go and watch his other videos. There's tons of them that will make you very hungry. But thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, again, if you have seen any other videos about Greece uh, that you want me to have a look, review and comment on, uh, let me know in the comments below and I would be quite happy to do another video uh, watching those videos and commenting on them. Uh, but until then, look around the screen and there will be links to some other videos that we've made with Greek food that you should know and make and try and enjoy. Bye bye for now.